فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وإخوانه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The question that was asked is what is the ruling uh, for a sister who is on her menstruation to enter the masjid in order to learn Quran to participate in a halaqa the ruling regarding this matter is as follows there is no evidence which is clear cut that prevents the woman who is on her menstruation to enter the masjid فَلَمْ يَرِدْ دَلِيلٌ ثَابِتٌ صَرِيحٌ يَمْنَعُ الْحَائِضَ مِنْ دُخُولِ الْمَسْجِدِ Since there is no evidence, the bara'atul الْأَصْلِيَةِ The original essence is عدم المنع She can't be stopped. So we have to understand the original essence is that the woman is allowed to enter the masjid unless there comes an evidence that stops her from it. So we have no evidence that's clear that indicates that the woman is not allowed to enter the masjid, masjid while she's on her menstruation. One. The second thing is that waradat waradat jumlatun. We also receive a great portion of what? Minal muayyidat, things that support huh? this asal, this strong, this an uh, original essence of al baraatul asliya. We have evidences that support that the woman is allowed to go to the masjid while she's on her menstruation is the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha that which Bukhari narrated anna walidata kanat sawda'a lihayy min al-arabi fa'ataquha faja'at ila rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fa'aslamat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha mentions a woman who used to be a slave of hers, she freed her. This woman went to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and she took Islam. Qalat Aisha, Aisha said, فَكَانَ لَهَا خِبَاءٌ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ أَوْ خِفْشٌ She used to live and reside inside the masjid. Here we find out, and we know, لَا يَخْفَى عَدَمُ الْإِنْفِكَاكِ we know that we cannot separate from this woman al hayd menstruation. She's a woman. She's bound to have her menstruation. It's bound to happen to her. And we also know that no evidence has proven وَلَمْ يُنْقَلْ عَنْهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And there's no evidence that has been transmitted to us from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم أَنَّهُ أَمَرَهَا بِاعْتِزَالِ الْمَسْجِدِ وَقْتَ حَيْضَتِهَا that the Prophet ordered her to leave the masjid or not to be in the masjid whilst she was in her menstruation. You see? So we have the evidence that we don't find there. We also have the Bara'atul Asliya, which is that the woman is originally allowed to go to the masjid even though she's on her menstrual cycle. Then we have no evidence proving it. Thirdly, we have this evidence that clearly can show that the messenger didn't order her anything. She resided in the masjid and he did not order her. Um, some may argue and say, this, for example, is waqa'atu ayn. It's a specific scenario. You can't take this and try to make it a general ruling. So it's a waqa'atu ayn wa hadithatu la umuma laha. It has no generaliz generalization. We will say to those people, we will say to them, first of all, this issue is not only, we're not only using as this as a waqa'atu aynin which we brought. Waqa'atu aynin means it's a particular scenario that took place, you can't give it a general ruling. We will reply by saying, first of all, we have an evidence which is bara'atul asliya. The original essence was that you had to provide us with an evidence to say that a woman is not allowed to enter the masjid whilst she's on her menstru menstruation. You have to provide us evidence that doesn't allow her. You haven't done that. You haven't provided anything strong. Two, the original essence was that she was allowed. 
And three, now we have this evidence. So it came as a help and a support with the Bara'atul Asliya. It came as a support huh? as a, with the Qa'idah uh, Bara'atul Asliya. Also, the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also strengthens this, which is the Messenger said, Inna al-Muslima la yanjus. That the Muslim does not become impure. Does not become impure. We also have وَيُقَوِّي هَذَا الْحُكْمَةِ What also strengthens that ruling is مَبِيتُ أَهْلِ الْإِعْتِكَافِ That the people who were doing i'tikaf in the masjid that were staying there, not one of them have we ever had a narration where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever said to them, Remember, whilst you are on your janabah, women, whilst you're on your menstruation, please do not come to the masjid. We don't have all of these. And remember the janaba and the hayd take the same ruling min bab al qiyas from the angle of analogy. Also, we have another hadith that strengthens that the woman can go into the masjid while she's on her menstruation. Is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha fi hajjat al wada' lamma hadat when she, it happened to her, her menstruation took place. She came to the messenger and said, Ya Rasulullah. She wanted to do Hajj, so her menstruation started. The messenger said to her, If Ali Aisha do ma yaf alul hajju, do what the people of Hajj are doing, Ghaira Alla Tatu fi bil bayti hatta tathuri. Except do not do tawaf around the masjid until you are until you purify yourself. So the messenger prevented her from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to do tawaf around the Kaaba. لكن he did not stop her صلى الله عليه وسلم من الدخول إلى المسجد. He did not stop her from entering the masjid للمكث فيه to stay in it. And the tawaf, the reason why he stopped her from it is because the tawaf requires wudu and it's obligatory for a woman to be in a state of purity when she's doing a tawaf. The messenger clearly عليه الصلاة والسلام indicated that to us. That the tawaf, the tawaf, it requires wudu. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, anna awwala shay'in bada'a bihi, ayy nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing that the messenger started with, hina qadima makkata, when he came to makkah with, anna tawadda'a thumma taafa bil bayt, that he done tawaf, but first what did he do? He done a wudu. So we know that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came to the haram, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he done tawaf. Before that, he done wudu. We know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hajj, his Hajj alayhi salatu wasalam, every action that he did, mahmoolatun ala al-wujubi fil asli. The asal is that all the actions of Hajj is obligatory, unless a evidence shows that it's not obligatory. Unless there comes an evidence that shows it's not obligatory. So the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Hajjatul Wada' came and he done tawaf around the Kaaba after he purified himself shows that the purification is an obligation that the person has to be upon what? He has to be upon uh, tahara. He has to be on wudu when he goes around the Kaaba. So Aisha didn't have that because she was on her menstruation. But he said to her, do everything else the people of Hajj are doing, except you cannot do a tawaf around the Kaaba. So what does that mean? Enter the masjid, read the Quran. If the people of Hajj are reading Quran, also read it, no problem. He did not prevent her from anything. Alayhi Only thing he prevented her from was, the only thing he prevented her from was, is to do tawaf around the Kaaba. Now, we know the qaida is ta'khiru al-bayanu to, to delay the clarification an waqti al-hajati when the need was there haya la yajuzu fi haqq al-rasul It is not, it, does, it will never happen from the messenger that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will tell Aisha to not do tawaf around the Kaaba but he would delay telling her alayhi salatu was, alayhi salatu was he would delay telling her not to go into the masjid also, other, other evidences show that prove that a woman who's on her menstruation, she can enter the masjid. Is the fact when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took the companion, uh, the, 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 the man, this man, Uthal, uh, uh, Thumama bin, bin Uthal, who later will become a companion, but when he was, a, uh, the Prophet took him as a spells of war, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, and the Prophet, he bonded him in the masjid, and he kept him in the pillar. And this is before he became a Muslim. 
we don't find that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa all asked him how his state was. Was he upon Janabah? The Prophet didn't ask him. And as I said, the Janabah and the Hayv are the same. Also, when the Wafd, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the uh, Wufud was used to come to him. Like when the Wafd Thaqif came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the, they used to came to, they, they would come to him to, in the Masjid alayhi salatu wasalam, before they all became a Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam never conditioned any one of them. He didn't condition them alayhi salatu wasalam uh, or ask them how their state was, are they pure or they're not. This shows that it is permissible for a disbeliever to enter the masjid. If a disbeliever is allowed to enter the masjid and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said about him, إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجَسٌ فَلَا يَقْرَبُوا الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ بَعْدَ عَامِهِمْ هَذَا it shows you that this is a disbeliever and he's allowed to enter the masjid. What do you think of a woman who's on a menstruation, who's a believer? Of course she's allowed to enter the masjid. So inshallah ta'ala, we will repeat by saying this issue of whether a woman on her menstruation can enter the masjid or even recite the Quran, even recite the Quran, we will say they both take the same ruling which is فَلَمْ يَرِدْ دَلِيلٌ ثَابِتٌ صَرِيحٌ يَمْنَعُ الْحَائِضَ مِنْ دُخُولِ الْمَسْجِدِ وَقِرَاءَةَ الْقُرْآنِ And the recitation of the Qur'an. The message of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, she said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ حِيَانِ The messenger used to remember Allah in all of his times. So that, the word here is every time the messenger used to remember Allah. So that every time will also mean when he was not pure, and he, when he was upon alayhi salatu wasalam, hadathu al-asghari wal-akbar. Anyone who wants to take this umum, this generalization, and specify it, fa'alayhi bid-dalil. He has to bring an evidence. Any part, any time, when he wants to say, he has to bring an evidence. So inshallah, we'll stick to the bara'at al A woman is allowed to go into the masjid while she's on her menstruation. She can read the Quran. She can even hold the mushaf if she wants to. It is highly recommended. It is mustahab. That the woman honors the masjid, she tries to stay away from entering the masjid until she is pure. Also, she also stays away from reading the Quran or even holding the mushaf while she's on her menstruation. But if she chooses to, she wants to, or she has a lesson in the masjid and she has to participate in that lesson, and she might miss it, or she's studying the Quran or anything, it is her rights. No one is able to stop her from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. استغفرك وأتوب إليه